ericmothethmother.com. It is January 26th, 2018. We are looking at markets here, trading pretty much at all-time highs. I believe we made another intraday high today or early this morning. Just want to show you what I'm looking at here. Now, you can see that I've already pretty much highlighted what I wanted to discuss here. And it goes back to the previous break on the five minute chart and to be clear I'm using RSI setting of 26 on the five minute here so five minute and the RSI is set at 26 so we can see that we had moved lower from this level here and we can call this a warning movement here because we come back and make new highs but you'll notice that the technicals do come and show resistance on this red line here so we hit that twice at the highs so that's something to start using the more that is confirmed as resistance, the more we know that around here we can expect a pullback. And also, more importantly, we take a look at the MACDs now. And we can see here that this was the initial attempt to go lower that held. We went higher. Now we are coming back. The more we break below that red line or the lows, recent lows on the MACD, the more this sets the stage for the true pullback, short term. Now we can also see here was a slight node. We tried to move higher. We've come back, we've moved below that level. That sets the stage for a pullback intraday unless, and it is a possibility, unless the RSI can move above this uniformity resistance line. Otherwise, the more we can see that the market here is showing, has already confirmed this resistance, the more this continues to be true and the market respects that, the more we break below this RSI node here and this one here, the more we are setting up for a pullback into a day, maybe even major highs as I have been discussing over the last couple of days where markets been opening at the highs of the day and drifting lower in terms of the technicals, not necessarily in terms of price. So let me conclude here with one more look. Because I'm using a five minute, this is very sensitive to the charts. Right? That's how we are setting up. Now keep in mind also that now if I update the chart, It looks like there's a possibility we can see that this is now the third time we've come here and tagged that red line right there. Also keep in mind that if we take a look at the MACDs now, we continue seeing potential breaks below that red line. This one is already below that red line. So based on all this, we see more and more evidence of a pullback around current levels. If we take a look at the VIX, we can see that it has been bouncing off the RSI 50, holding, and even here it is holding. So this could be the inverse that the VIX holds. In fact, let me update this. All right, so the VIX right now could actually be showing that this is where it holds which is this level here. So we start to see how that goes. Now, if we take a look at the Dow, we've been watching this improvement to all time highs. While the technicals have generally been making lower highs. So that negative divergence here is also still pressing the idea that more than likely this is gonna lead to a pullback. If we take a look at the 30 minute chart for the Dow, we can see here the Dow has also been pushing higher. 
while the technicals have not been following through. In fact, let me zoom into that time period so we can see it clearly. So this is 30 minutes, one month time frame. So one month of data in the 30 minute time frame. And you can see that this is what it looks like. Now I should say this, because of the strength of the weekly and monthly chart, honestly, it should not surprise anybody if the market actually breaks out. Now, if it breaks out, we are going to be moving substantially higher and very fast. So that's just one disclaimer. That's why we always make sure we set stops. But as long as we continue seeing this negative divergence playing out, right now the primary conclusion from this is that we are still looking at the formation of negative divergence. We should encourage us to be looking for the opposite, which is generally what this is suggesting is as long as that line continues to show resistance, we are still looking at a market that is due for a pullback. Even as prices trade close to the highs of the day. Now, the reason why I say we should be very careful here, assuming the market cannot even move much, much higher, of course, the reason should be right here. This is the reason. The strength of the RSI holding above 69.1, and this is on the daily, is self-evident ever since we moved above that level. You can see what has happened to prices, pretty much tiny pullbacks, and we continue moving higher. So as long as the RSI is above 69.1, the risk is always to the upside, or the trend is always to the upside. It's very tough to find the highs while the RSI is above 69.1, and this is the daily, just the daily. And of course, I've been talking about this phenomena. Even here, we can see what happened once it moved above 69.1, and it stayed above that until it moved back below it, which is here. Same thing also, and this is something I guess it is always somebody new. So let me just go ahead and show this. Above 69.1, we stay above it until we move back below it, is when prices see a little bit of a pullback. Now, these pullbacks have been shallow. The reason is on the weekly we continue holding above 69.1. And again here, same phenomena. On a daily, we moved above 69.1. That was last year. We stayed pretty much very strong on a very strong daily uptrend here until we moved back below it, which is this time period here. Right? Now, Let's take a look at the weekly. And here we have the weekly for the Dow. You know, the same conclusion is pretty much for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I'm just using the Dow here. And we can see again on the weekly time frame, we moved above 69.1. Pretty much we held until we moved back below it here. So another very strong move on the weekly time frame. Pullbacks were there, but they were very shallow and short-lived. We do the same thing again here. Again, about back above 69.1, which is pretty much a sign of strength and very bullish sentiment. We stay above it until we move back here. So another multi-week rally to new highs and of course since about September of 2017 we can see that we went above 69.1 again and we still remain above that so the conclusion is inescapable as long as our RSI is above 69.1 as long as we haven't seen any change in this we know that our markets are going to be sideways to outright bullish the risk here actually is that we go into a better finish. This is still strong, but it wouldn't surprise 
to see that we go on a straight shot to the moon or even beyond that. As long as our RSI remains above this level, this is a supercharged bull market and actually remains as such. Now we can see here on this long-term monthly chart that ever since we here in the 90s, one of the best markets recently in the recent 30 years or so, here from 96 to let's call it 2000, and you can see most of the time we had spent holding above 69.1. The other market that had a strong finish was here between 2006 and 2007. Right? Now, this is where we need to have a little bit of a change in discussion. The other side of a strong market, just like we see here, where the RSI continues to hold above 69.1. So the other side or the flip side of a strong bull, bullish market is an extreme bear market. And this is inescapable. So in other words, at some point, it might not have to be in the next week, in the next month, because I still think there is a chance for negative divergence to show up. At some point, the end result of this big move is we are going to get a substantial, nasty bear market. Because you don't get a strong explosion in price of this nature without a reactional move negating all those gains. So what is strange here is that, you know, generally speaking, you don't see the market make a major high while the RSI is trading this strong. It doesn't happen like that for the most part. Now, you can see here in 2000, for the Dow at least, we had an improvement to new highs on a monthly closing basis, and then there was this negative divergence. Negative divergence and also 69.1, 69.1 rejection right there. That is what coincided with this monthly closing high, and ultimately we go into this bear market. What about the 2007 high? Well, yes, we stayed above 69.1 and then we dropped. But notice, this looks like a head and shoulders. One, two, three. Right? Hard to see. Or well, let me draw it this way. You got your left shoulder, you got your head right there, and then right shoulder. And that set the stage for the highs there and then we drop. So what I'm saying is there's a possibility and I've been talking about this for a while. The risk here is that this market pulls back, makes an attempt to move above this 69.1 level, fails, but prices will make substantially higher highs in that process. So there is a possibility here that this future negative divergence is what might set the stage for a true high. Now that is just theory, I don't know. Because my research also does show that there are times when we have a major change, which means a major move. So let's say this is 69.1. Market's been holding above 69.1. Sometimes the change comes with a very hard crack back below 69.1. And that can be the end of it. So that is also a possibility. A hard, strong move back below 69.1. And that can also signal the end of a tremendous bull run. Now, I should point out something else here. From a pure numbers consideration, 
right now the Dow for the month is up about yeah, let's call it 1771 points just for the month of January now clearly this is the biggest price move on a monthly basis ever you don't see any other big this type of a move over the last let's say since the 90s well, I guess of course since the 90s this is the biggest price move ever and that is like saying this is the longest in terms of running the Dow has ever done in one month so clearly at some point it's gonna get tired and that's something else to consider another way of looking at it it's the biggest run and in fact if you take this monthly gain from here on a month to month basis we haven't seen any rest so this is pretty much close to a 6,000 move since so 6,000 6,000 point move from let's call it one two three four five six seven months 6,000 now keep in mind the Dow was trading at 6,000 only in 96 and now it's gaining 6,000 in a couple of months so definitely we are getting closer and closer to this thing popping question is when and where all right let me end this so here we are so our markets are trading and let me begin with a chart or let me end with a chart I began with you can see here our five minute time frame confirming MACD has already broken momentum RSI continues to show resistance so we are still expecting that pullback and if we take a look at the S&P 500 here at the highs an improvement to all time intraday highs take a look at the technicals they are making a lower high so that is still confirming negative divergence and we can see the same thing also on the 30 minute time frame an improvement to fresh all time intraday highs but the RSI is struggling so that negative divergence continues to set the stage for a pullback as long as those negative divergences hold on the smaller time frames Eric Moore with Mother.com. As always, good luck, peace, and blessings. E I C S. You still here? Haha. <laughs>